And I'm lying awake most of the night, waiting to hold you tight. Now that I do, and look at you, my heart is breaking. This can't be true. Lost you before I found you, gone before you came. to my soul close to my heart right from the start lost in time lost in space can't wait to see your face now that I do and look at you
this afternoon and on behalf of James and Jeanette and Chloe and Patrick and their extended family, I want to thank you for coming today to be a part of this special service as we honour baby James McDonald Thompson. None of you met baby James. His calling into the world lasted only a few hours and yet there's something still in our hearts that grieve deeply. I think it's probably because we have been with him. We've been with him as Jeanette has carried him these last nine months. We were right there with them. We rejoiced with them when they first got the news that they were pregnant. We stood with them in prayer as they received those challenging news things as well about his, his problems. We rode the ups and downs alongside them as they journeyed through that time. In fact, baby James was probably familiar with some of your voices as he would have heard them through the womb. And so it's appropriate for us to grieve alongside Jeanette and James and Chloe and Patrick. No parent should have to witness the passing of their own child. It is the most painful experience imaginable. And so we share that pain with them today. We don't want to run from the pain or hide away from the grief. We want to walk this valley together. That's why today, this afternoon, it, it's actually very important that we do this. There must be an expression of grief so that we can share that pain and make today a marker of moving forward. The grief can be an important part of healing, especially when we share it together. And so thank you for being here with them and together. I'm going to ask if um, Pastor Mark would come and bring some comfort through the Word of God and he's going to lead us in a time of prayer as well. Uh, Pastor Mark walked very closely in those last times with James and Jeanette and so I want to welcome him to share that with us. Well, thank you, Pastor Brett. And I too... We'd just like to, to um, just to echo also the welcome to everybody here today. Just your presence here is much appreciated. Thank you for being here. I have the privilege to bring the Bible reading and the opening prayer this afternoon. The Bible reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses, uh, verses 15 through to 17. And it reads thus, that one day some parents brought their little children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But when the disciples saw this, they scolded the parents for bothering him. Then Jesus called for the children and said unto the disciples, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Let us pray. Would you just bow your heads, please? Gracious and merciful God, our Heavenly Father and the author of life, we have come here today to render heartfelt thanks to you for the precious life of baby James Thompson. We express our gratitude to you, our God, for the way in which his cherished time here with us has touched and enriched our lives so much. We confess that at times such as these that we do not fully understand the mysteries of life, nor why certain, uh, 
certain circumstances occur. However, we ask humbly for your divine comfort and strength in these seasons of sadness and loss. We also seek your great providence upon us, especially, Lord God, for Jeanette and James and for Chloe and for Patrick as they go through this season. May all of us here today know the presence of the great comforter, the very one who gladly welcomes little children into his loving arms. Guide us through this service today by your Holy Spirit. And we ask this in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Pastor Mark. One of the most important aspects of uh, services like this is to share the story of the person uh, and to remember them. And James, baby James's story is a, a short one, but I think there's a lot of value in hearing it from James and Jeanette. They've taken some time to put together their thoughts and memories, and I've invited them to come and share the story so that we can walk with them on the journey that they've been on. So I invite James and Jeanette to come and uh, share baby James's story. How's it going, everyone? So it was fantastic waiting for baby to arrive. Jeanette and I were so happy. I can remember how happy I was. During my work day at QAL at Gladstone, and sometimes often dreaming about what being a dad for the first time would be like. Oh dear. Uh, I like thinking about the simple stuff, like what sports we could play, beaches we could go to, and various fishing spots. Oh, I know I would be keen to try when baby was big enough. I knew nothing about scans, so I had nothing to fear, all was good. We had 20 week scan on the 10th of December and I was so excited because that was my last work day for the year. I finished early then drove back from Gladstone just in time for the baby scan. That was a Friday. We said we wanted a surprise if we were having a boy or a girl. So the sonographer lady congratulated us and said everything looked just fine. Uh, on the Monday, Jeanette's phone rang and she was upset because Rockhampton Hospital rang uh, wanted an urgent meeting about what they had seen concerning our baby. The news wasn't good. Uh, CDH is uh, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. We chose to continue and give baby every opportunity for a chance at life. December 17 we, f we felt our first four kicks, and that was on a Monday. All our care for baby was transferred to Brisbane, and by the Wednesday, we had our first trip to Brisbane. The news was worse once we were given the first total lung volume, 25% uh, was calculated. 
along with our list of options and potential outcomes um, from Dr Andreas. We were very upset. All we could do was pray and ask God for his favour and a miracle for our baby. A month later, all our care was then through the MARTA. We met all, our, all the senior staff and Professor Kumar. Uh, Professor Kumar had calculated 35% lung volume and was very positive that, we, we, that he had seen worse cases survive and that we were improved into a better category. That means our survivability statistics went up to 50%. We were no longer a candidate for FIDO surgery um, because of the risk. So that's a surgery. They put a balloon in the baby's windpipe to cause the lungs to infl inflate. Um, we had a lot of positives in baby's favour then, but we knew we had many difficult surgeries to pass for baby to reach a recovery. And so all of our appointments gave us positive news. Baby's development, size and weight were right down the middle for average. Not too big, not too small. And the CDH was the only known condition baby had. Baby had a strong, healthy heart also. Um, Jeanette had gestational diabetes and done the best job managing food and sugar levels and keeping constant records. Plus four needles a day was another massive task but did a fantastic job managing. Baby otherwise had a very healthy mum. 7th of March, we had our final MRI scan and it calculated baby's lung volume at 27.5% with more organs inside the chest and left lung not visible. It was a massive setback. That puts us back just outside a severe category. We thought we could have been in a more, with more of a chance and in the mid-30s. By then it was far too late for that FIDO surgery. Port, um, no shift changes. Uh, they, they were there for us and baby. Um, and we're at the neonatal intensive care unit. About 15 minutes after birth, we raced down the hall and up the lift and into the NICU unit. There were about seven to eight babies on the right-hand side and about two on the left-hand side in a big open room. I think there were three sets of parents there. They worked so hard with baby James, who, had, who we hadn't even named yet. They'd done chest compressions to resuscitate him and a second a second time. And I was well clear of the staff and I could see I could see enough. I was really upset but I stayed hopeful that and I stayed hopeful. They got me a big couch and a unopened box of tissues and I tore half of them out in one handful. The team of about 10 staff worked so frantically to get baby stable. I could see their body language. The, the head NICU nurse who resuscitated him came to me and said he has had such a rough start. Um, he is a, and he is extremely unwell. I told her to please get my wife here as quickly as possible. And, um, but before that, she got me a drink of water and I nearly spilled it. I was, I was shaking so bad. I could see 
uh, the two doctors' disappointment in their body language while they were while they were chatting. I just wanted to cry out loud, but kept the noise down. It hurt so much. One doctor came to me and spoke very clearly and slowly about baby, baby status and that he would likely pass away in hours or in a couple of days tops. He had lots of morphine to be pain free the whole time. With all the help from With all the help he had, he couldn't get enough oxygen to his blood to supply his brain and his other organs, and he had four times the carbon dioxide build up in his blood. So he couldn't take the good air in, and he couldn't get bad air out. Um, his stomach was becoming full of um, toxins also. He was limp and his, his feet and his hands were blue. Jeanette R arrived on a wheelchair and I said, and I said what was going on with baby and it took quite some time to sink in for Jeanette. The staff were just so helpful and we were in total distress we couldn't think straight. They had, and they had all good advice for us. We knew our time with baby was short. They asked if we had a name yet. I said, baby James. As I'd discussed with Jeanette months earlier, if we had a boy, if we had a girl, Jeanette chooses the name. If we had a boy, I'll choose the name. Staff asked us those pictures going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Staff asked us if we wanted to baptize him, but we said there's too many hoses for a start. But they went and got Dr. Joseph from across the hall. He was a blood bought believer and he prayed for baby with us and he prayed such a beautiful prayer just for baby James. Then our professor came and said hello and, and he said he was so, so sorry. I wanted for him to say something about trying something else to, to help baby. I felt, that, I felt that the decision to say goodbye to James only set in more. We rang Chloe and Patrick for a video call and basically to say goodbye to James. We got to hold James and kiss him and say to him he was so special and gorgeous and to us and, and told him God's love endures forever and I promised him I will see him in God's kingdom. Um, on this notes, um, he was born at 2.48 p.m. in the afternoon, yeah, 8.06 p.m. The tubes were taken out and tape removed off his top lip. His eyes were closed when we held him. Over three minutes after the tubes were removed, from baby James gave us all a smile and it was verified by all the other four nurses and midwives. Two of them were taking photos for us just catching the end of his, his smile. He smiled like he had just met someone. It was a look on his face of genuine joy and peace, almost laughter and no pain. And right there we knew he was peaceful and that really gave us encouragement at such a difficult moment.
Okay, first of all, I want to thank you all for joining us today to remember our sweet boy, baby James. It all started by God bringing a special gift to my life, my husband, James. Even though we married at a later age, we both wanted to have a child together. After facing the sadness of a miscarriage, we became pregnant again with our baby James. It was such an exciting time for us, going to the first ultrasound and seeing the images on the screen and hearing baby, baby's heartbeat. In later scans, we enjoyed watching our baby move about and wriggle around. We had a very energetic bubba on our hands. We kept healthy and did everything that we could do to ensure a good pregnancy. We trusted God for our baby James, and we prayed each morning to God for health and well-being. We didn't mind whether we had a boy or a girl, just as long as our baby was healthy. Each morning, we would, each morning we would talk to my tummy and say that we couldn't wait to meet and hold our baby. My husband James, as a daddy, had such a soft spot he would kiss baby James through my belly and sing to baby James too. My heart was overflowing with joy. We found out at our 20 week scan that our baby James had CDH and we've been on an emotional journey since then. However, through it all, we know that God has helped us by placing people and circumstances in our path right when we needed it. We also know that we were covered in prayer by countless people, and we have felt it. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a very rare abnormality, only affecting one in 4,000 pregnancies here in Australia. Because of this, our medical care was handed over to specialists in Brisbane at the Mater Mothers Brisbane. We met with many doctors and staff, and you were in good hands. We're in good hands there and we're in God's hands. Our treatment by them over the final four months was fantastic. They showed genuine support to us through our journey. A month before our baby was due, we relocated to Brisbane. This was a very hard thing to do. As I didn't want to leave Chloe and Patrick behind. And I'm appreciative of family and friends who helped Chloe and Patrick in our absence. During our time in Brisbane, we were super thankful that we were able to stay at Ronald McDonald House. The staff was so kind and helpful and made our days much easier to get through. At the house, we met other families who also had very sick kids and we made some very special friends along the way who encouraged us and built us up. On the day our baby James was born, I woke up from having a dream. I had dreamt that we were having a baby boy. The labor had been induced, but went smoothly, and soon we delivered our baby. We were both so happy, happy to finally meet our sweet baby. I remember the midwives putting James, baby James on my belly and being surprised as he wrapped his little fist around my finger and he held on tight. This is one of my most favorite moments with him. Then they lifted our baby up and we discovered that we had a baby boy. Daddy James was so proud and he decided to follow the family tradition of naming the firstborn son of each generation, James McDonald Thompson. I cried tears of joy just to know we had a son. Hmm. As you've heard, baby James was not very well soon after birth because he was unable to breathe on his own. So I'm ever so thankful that da Daddy James stayed with baby and never left him alone. Through the next hour, while I couldn't be there, Daddy James showed such bravery to witness all the medical interventions to try to help our sweet baby boy. Even in the darkest of time, when the doctors told us there would be no improvement and it was only a matter of time, God sent us faith, a faith-filled Christian doctor to pray with us and for us. This was exactly the comfort that we needed then and there. I remember my first cuddle with baby James. He was so perfect on the outside. Who would have known 
that his tiny body was struggling to survive on the inside, but all the health issues were on the inside. It was difficult for me to fully comprehend the reality of the situation. I think I was in denial, but slowly it sunk in, and I realised that our time with baby James was short, and every moment we had together was precious. I had the opportunity to read him a book and to tell him how loved and special he was to us. We spoke to him, cuddled him and kissed him. I held him and never wanted to let him go. I prayed God would heal him and let him live. The doctors had told us that baby James wouldn't recover and that it would only be a matter of time before he would pass away. We decided to not prolong his suffering but instead spend special time together while we could. So we moved out of the NICU and into a quiet room and we had private time with him before he fell asleep here on earth and woke up in heaven. These were some of our most precious moments with baby James and we are very grateful for the opportunity. Baby James passed into heaven while being cuddled by his mummy and daddy. Following baby James's passing, our, our hearts felt broken beyond repair. Having our baby boy leave us so soon was still such a shock. We were offered a cuddle cot. This allowed us to have him in our room for as long as we needed to say goodbye properly. God sent many people to come and comfort us. First, our midwives from the labour room and nurses from the NICU came and visited us and encouraged us. Then we had family, my brother's family, and James's dad and younger brother came to visit us and meet baby James and hold him. A Christian chaplain came and prayed with us, which was such a good positive thing for our hearts. Then Dr Jardine, our paediatric doctor, who was in charge of... Uh, in charge at the NICU, visited us and answered all our worrisome questions to set our minds at ease. A lady called Belinda from the bereavement team gifted us a memory box for baby James full of treasures to keep. She was a Christian woman and she also offered services including making hand and footprints, taking photos, doing moulds to help us build special memories of our tiny son. She also helped us through the bereavement paperwork, processes and hard decisions. All the staff at the Brisbane Martyr Mothers Hospital went above and beyond to make us feel comfortable and at ease during our stay. Through it all, God has been so faithful. Our daily prayer during pregnancy was to be able to meet and hold our baby. God answered this prayer and granted our heart's desire. We got to meet our baby. We got to hold our baby. Even though baby James lived a short life of about six hours, he was completely and utterly loved each day along the journey. We look forward to the glorious day when we shall get to meet our beautiful boy again in heaven. Um, I've also got a poem that I'd like to share with you all. It was written by one of my aunties who can't be here today. Um, she sent it in a post and I just thought it was such a beautiful poem. I wanted to read it to you. It's called Asleep. Faith does not stop our pain or our grief. Deep emotions that make us human. But as we turn to God for relief, faith does steady our, our belief in a master plan that is greater than man. Eyes cannot see, nor mind comprehend, yet unbending faith believes in a God who holds us all, in his embrace of love, whether it be here or in the realms above, asleep. He has not died, let faith abide. In the arms of Jesus, he is safe until heaven's doors burst open wide no judgment for him so innocent and pure his place in heaven secure you can be sure angels in shimmering light attend by his side 
shining love so perfect and bright. For him, eternity has no night. Hold this sight close, locked deep in your heart. Through God's grace and faith that sees, you know death cannot keep your part. In him we trust because we know we must. Everything else is shifting sands. Grief just bearable because we know he holds the whole world, eternity, and your precious babe in his hands. So that was just a really beautiful poem that one of my aunties wrote for us for our baby James. So thank you all. All, all loss is difficult. It reminds us of our mortality. It marks the end of our earthly connection with people. It triggers deep grief. Baby James's loss is difficult. And for many people, there'll be questions that come with that. Why did he die? Where is he now? I suppose there are medical answers as to why James uh, is not with us. But where is James now is often the burning question that people ask, particularly when it comes to children. Now, there's a lot in the Bible that teaches us about how much God values children. Jesus himself mentions how valuable they are to the kingdom in our reading earlier that Pastor Mark read. There is enough in the Bible for us to know that James is with God. You can have confidence that you will meet him again. Not because of any church ritual like baptism and not because James and Jeanette are Christian, but because the Bible shows us this. There is a story that many of you will know of King David and his first child. Bathsheba gave birth to a boy, but the boy only lived seven days. He was very, very sick because he was struck by a fever. And I want to read you the story, if you will allow me. It comes from 2 Samuel chapter 12. David begged God to spare the child. He went without food and lay all night on the bare ground. The elders of his household pleaded with him to get up and eat with them, but he refused. Then on the seventh day, the child died. David's advisors were afraid to tell them. He wouldn't listen to reason while the child was ill. They said, what drastic thing will he do when we tell him the child is dead? When David saw them whispering, he realized what had happened. Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied, he is. Then David got up from the ground, washed himself, put on lotions and changed his clothes. And he went to the tabernacle and he worshipped the Lord. After that, he returned to the palace and was served food and ate. His advisors were amazed. We don't understand you, they told him. While the child was still living, you wept and refused to eat. But now that the child is dead, you've stopped your mourning and are eating again. And David replied, I fasted and wept while the child was alive, for I said, perhaps the Lord will be gracious to me and let the child live. But why should I fast when he is dead? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him one day, but he cannot return to me. We see King David's grief expressed as any father would, and we have heard James speak today 
but it helps us too because we can see that David was a strong man, a man of God, strong in faith, a powerful warrior leader, yet he grieved deeply. But once the child passed, David then expresses his faith in a way that I think helps us today. Why should I fast when he is dead? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him one day, but he cannot return to me. David had experienced many battles in his life. He'd experienced a lot of death. He knew the finality of it. But in all that loss, David drew on the strength of faith that he had in God. We look to David as one of the godliest men of the Old Testament. He was closer to God than any other man. God referred to him as a man after his own heart. So when he speaks truth, we know we can depend on it. When he speaks of heaven, we know that if a godly man as close to God as that speaks with confidence, we can have confidence too. David knew that he would see his baby again. He knew that death was not the end. He knew that God had a plan after we die. And so he spoke those words with great confidence, words that can comfort you today. One day you will see James again. He can't share this life with you, but he'll be there in the next. So like David, you too wipe your ear tears, pick up your life, and you will live in the confidence of knowing that you will see him again. I'd like to pray briefly before I hand us over to Pastor Mark again. Father, we can see your hand at work in this story that James and Jeanette have told us. How you were with them in an unusual comfort. How you strategically placed your children next to them at various times. How the words of truth and the promises of Jesus have been allowed to fill their heart. How Jeanette can stand here and in the power of the Holy Spirit tell everyone that you have been good to them. And so we know, Lord, that your hand has not left us. You're right there. And we thank you for your presence the truth of your word and the power of eternal life. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor Mark to come and uh, help us to bring our service today to a close. Friends, there are some things that we need to talk about just before we close the service. The first thing is that on the table at the, uh, in the foyer that there'll be a little book. It's a blue book. Would you please just, just to sign that book? And if you feel that you need to make a comment or you need to put some words of encouragement, some words of love, please... Please just take advantage of that little book and just put something in that for us as well. You'll, you will also see that there is a tree. And if you haven't been able to take a ribbon yet and to, to actually tie it on the tree, would I just encourage you to do that as well. Just something for us to be able to, to express our love and our care to this family. And the final thing is directly after the close of the service that there'll be refreshments that there's an afternoon tea. I believe it will be in that area of the church as well. You'll see everybody moving over there as well. Would you join us, please, for afternoon tea as we close the service? Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of life and love. 
this time where, Lord, that we have been able to reflect and this time to remember. As each of us goes our separate ways, would you graciously grant us your healing touch upon our souls, especially for baby James's family and friends? Let James's legacy of love and life remain close to our hearts. May each one know the presence and the comfort of the great majesty of heaven. And may the memory of this little boy one day bring tears of gladness and joy rather than the heaviness that we now feel. Your promise to us is this, that those that sow in tears will reap in joy. Release us with the blessing of our loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now the benediction. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you all. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And that is able to conclude the service this afternoon. Again, thank you for everybody for coming and sharing this very precious time. Amen. See